Good morning. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning just thanking you so much for the blessings that you give to us each and every day. We thank you, Father, for this another beautiful Lord's Day, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come here and to sing songs of praises, come to you in prayer, listen to another message from your word and to fellowship with one another. We ask you, Father, to be with those that have been mentioned on our prayer list, be with, uh, be with them, and uh, we ask that you lay your hands on them and bring them back to their much-wanted health. We ask you, Father, to go with us through our service today. Uh, help us to uh, keep an open mind and listen to the words that are said, apply it to our lives, and, and be uh, uh, successful teachers and uh, listeners to your word. We ask you, Father, just to, uh, we thank you so much for your son Jesus that died on that cross for us. We ask you, Father, to be with us now as we go through this uh, service. Watch over us, guide us, and direct us, and keep us all, uh, help us to all remember the Christians that we should be to those around us, uh, and just help us uh, throughout our lives. Be with us now, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing song number two. That was song number two. And also, hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name, praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim, all his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Next, let's sing song number 790. That was 790.
And next, let's sing song number 339. That was 339, and during this song, we'll prepare for communion. Do mi so lo We have now come to the part of the service, which is the Lord's Supper. If you would, please turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 20, and I'll begin reading at verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. As Christians, this is giving a scriptural example of when we should partake of the precious body and blood of the Lord. Now, if you would, please turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'll begin reading at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the bread. 
Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for another wonderful Lord's Day that you've allowed us all to see, dear Lord. We thank you for waking us up and putting breath in our lungs and having the opportunity to be here to worship you. Dear Lord, I pray we ask that as we prepare to partake of this precious body, dear Lord, I pray we do so in a manner that's pleasing to you, dear Lord. Pray we do so without a grudging heart, dear Lord. Please bless his bread. Let us take it in clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus Christ's name, I say this prayer. Amen. Continuing verse 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry, one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we humbly approach you again, dear Lord, just thanking you for another wonderful opportunity to worship you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son who died on the cross, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I pray as we prepare to partake of this precious blood, dear Lord, that we do so in a manner that's pleasing to you, dear Lord. We thank you for all your continued blessings. In Jesus Christ's name, I say this prayer. Amen. Let's sing song number 294. That was 294. Do so do me. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. This has concluded the Lord's Supper. We have now come to the portion of the service, which is giving. If you would, please turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and I'll be reading verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we humbly approach your throne again, dear Lord, thanking you for another wonderful Lord's Day that you've allowed us all to see, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us the right mind and right spirit 
to be here to worship you. Dear Lord, we thank you for all your blessings that you continue to bestow upon us. Dear Lord, we thank you for the freedoms you give us, dear Lord, to be able to worship you. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son that died on the cross for all of our sins, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask that as we prepare to give back a portion of what we've earned, dear Lord, I pray we do so without a grudging heart, dear Lord. We pray you find these offerings, dear Lord, pleasing to you. We thank you for all your continued blessings, dear Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, I say this prayer. Amen. As they finish the collection, if you would like to mark the song that will be after our lesson, that will be song number 886. That was 886. And the song that will be before our lesson will be song number 663. That was 663. And if it's not a burden to you, let's stand as we sing. Please be seated. Skip to reading Deus 
Luke, Luke 5, verses 1 through 5. That's Luke 5, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And it states, And it came to pass that, at, that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gensensen and saw two ships standing, standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little far from the land. And he sat down and taught, he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep, and let, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have, not, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Luke chapter 5. Like the other gospel writers, Luke records the calling of Jesus' uh, most prominent disciples, that is Peter, James, and John. These three form Jesus' inner circle, and they are privy to events that the others are not. The great catch of fish recorded here in Luke chapter 5 is unique to his gospel. However, John has a similar episode occurring at Peter's recommissioning in John 21, 4, 7, after Jesus' resurrection. And we want to show here in Luke chapter 5, why was Peter gazing at empty nets? When he looked into his net and he says, Master, we have toiled all night. Why am I still gazing at empty nets? And I see in our lives when we've done all that we can do and we can do no more and we're still gazing at empty nets. Well, Jesus was the answer to Peter's call. Peter, the reason why you're still gazing at empty nets it's because you did not trust in me. Let us go to Luke chapter 5, where the Bible starts in verse 1, and it says, Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. And there are three things we want to look at from Peter's response here. Peter says in verse number five, but I will do as you say because you are gentle. I will do as you say because you are master. And I will do as you say because I am a sinful man. There are three things to learn there from Peter's uh, um, interaction with Jesus. Notice here, when he had finished in verse 4 speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets down. Now, Jesus is always able to accomplish whatever he says. In fact, in John chapter 2, 
when he turned the water to wine in verse number five, Mary, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. That's what the Bible says. Whatever he says to you, do it. And Jesus said to Peter, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Peter did not immediately do what Jesus told him to do. In fact, what Peter did was he answered and said to the Lord, well, I've been toiling all night. We've been working. We worked hard all night and caught nothing. But I will do as you say and let down the nets. So Peter says, we have been toiling all night. He did not do as Jesus told him to do at the beginning, but what Peter did was he answered back to the Lord again. You ever found yourselves in a situation where the Bible says what God wants us to do, but we want to answer back to God? That's exactly what Peter did. Instead of doing what God told him to do, Peter answered back, and that's probably the reason why Peter continued to gaze at empty nets. And the thing, the thing about it in our lives, when we do not see things coming to that we would like to see from the Lord, we are still gazing at empty nets, it's because we are trying to do it on our own. I can't do it. I need Jesus. And I believe everyone in here needs Jesus, but I cannot do it on my own. I cannot do it without others who are supporting me, but I cannot do it without Jesus. And it takes a lot in a man to stand and say, look, I need you. And when a man thinks he can trust in himself without God, that man is in trouble. And that man will keep gazing at empty nets throughout his life. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke 18, 9. Jesus says, and he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves. He trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Jesus said it is these type of people who trust in themselves. That's why they are continuing to gaze at empty nets. Look at Luke 16, 15. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men. But God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Why is it that we justify ourselves in the sight of men? Why is it that we trust in ourselves and we do what man says but we question God? Peter said, well, Master, I've been working all night. Peter, just let the net down. But Peter wanted to explain what he's going through. Well, 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 I've been working all night. I need you to know what I've been doing. But if you want me to let this net down, as if he's saying, Lord, I mean, do you know what you're talking about? Job said in Job 30 and 26, he says, when I expected good, then evil came. When I waited for light, then darkness came. What is it that we're waiting on that is causing us to continue to gaze at empty nets? All we have to do is obey the Lord. Look at uh, Psalms 27, 14. David said, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. I think that that is a problem in many Christians' lives, waiting on God, because God's going to respond when God 
at the perfect time, God wants to respond. You can't move God's hand. You can't force God to do what you want him to do. I can't force God to do what I want him to do. But sometimes a man can become frustrated when they've done all that they can, and then the Lord is still telling me, this is what's going to work. Well, I, I just don't think so. And here I am gazing at empty nets. So when they, then the Bible says in verse 5 there, Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night. Now, notice who Jesus is here. He says, but by your word, I will do as you say and let down the nets. But by your word. Notice this here. By your word, because you are gentle. If you go back up to verse number three, the Bible says, and he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and Jesus asked him. Now, this powerful, mighty God is asking Peter in a gentle spirit. He did not command him. He did not force him. But the Bible says he asked him, which means Jesus, you uh, plead, hey, Peter, would you please put your boat out? Now, we know who the Lord is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, this is God the Son, creator of all things, and he is gentle. Notice what it says. The word gentle, it refers to words that bring God's order to a situation. Gentle means what God has called Christians to be. See, Jesus calls us to be gentle. Look at 2 Timothy 2, 24. It says, the Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, Patient when wronged, with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. But he says, do it with gentleness. You ever tried to deal with someone without or someone who's not gentle? And they'll get you out of your square. Someone who's not gentle will cause both of y'all to turn against God. Because some people just have that in them. They don't have the spirit of gentle. They're going to give you a piece of their mind. Well, if that's a piece of your mind, I'd hate to see what your whole mind looks like. But some people do not do things in the spirit of gentleness. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble. I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. But Jesus says, I am gentle, and I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Well, if Jesus is gentle, and he calls, his, uh, calls us to be gentle, how do we respond? Well, it says right here in 2 Timothy 24, be kind to all, <clears throat> able to teach, patient when wrong. Is that a tough one, to be patient when you're wronged? Is that a tough one? Someone cut you off in traffic and you got every sign language in the book. Or you've said everything that you're not supposed to. So it says, do all things but to be kind to all and able to teach and patient when wronged with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. But it has to be done with gentleness. That's what Jesus called us to do. Look at Matthew 21, 5. He told the people there, he says, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle, and mounted on a donkey, even on a coat, the foal of a beast of burden. And sometimes not being gentle would be the very reason why we're still gazing at empty nets. Is there something 
in your life that you've just been wanting or something you're trying to accomplish. But it seems like you keep coming up empty. You keep asking God, and it seems like God's not responding. Well, please, how many times do I have to ask you, Father? I'm, I'm begging you to help me. Can you take the wheel? And you keep begging, but all of a sudden I'm still gazing at empty nets. What is it, Father? Father, I'm waiting on you. And God is saying, no, son, I'm waiting on you. We talking about we're waiting on God. Maybe God is waiting on you. You do all that you can do, and God will do what you can't do. You give it the best, and God will take care of the rest. And we end up gazing at these empty nets, and we want, to, and then God becomes uh, 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 the victim or, or, or of our circumstance. We turn from God, and we turn to man, or we turn to ourselves. But he's a gentle God, and he calls us to be patient. God wants us to wait on him. David said, wait on the Lord. I say again, wait. But Peter did not do as the Lord asked him to do. And, and the Lord said, Simon, ask him to be. The Lord said, he asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. Jesus is teaching the people because the most important thing, no matter what a person is going through, the most important thing is that the word of God will help you. The word of God will strengthen you. That's what it says in Romans 10, 17, right? Faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. The Lord wants us to hear him. And you know what? If, if, if you don't read your Bible, you're going to go under. Or you're going to trust in yourself and keep doing things your way. But if you don't read the word of God, you will not be built up. And you'll wonder why you're still gazing at empty nets. I'm like Peter. Uh, Lord, I'm... I'm, I'm continuing to ask you, can you help me? Would you, would you please help me through this situation? Can you help me with this difficult person? How do I be gentle to someone who's so harsh? Well, Jesus was the example. He could have told Peter, Peter, look, get your boat and put it out there, boy. He could have commanded Peter. He could have uh, made Peter do what he wanted him to do. But God doesn't want us to be robots. We have free will. Either we're going to obey God or we're not. When he told the children of Israel, he said, I put before you a blessing and a curse. Either you take the blessing or you take the curse. But you know, it's amazing that we take the curse over the blessing. It's amazing. There's two things right here, the cursing and the blessing. Uh, if the, well, the blessing will get me to heaven and the cursing will get me to hell. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take the curse. It's because I like what the curse has to offer. See, I don't have to wait on God when I can get instant gratification right now. I don't want to have to wait on God. And that's the problem that I have, I know as a man, is that, well, Lord, when? If not now, when? So Peter, we worked, Peter said there in verse 5, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But I will do as you say and let down the nets. Now, Peter, now listen to what Peter says here. We worked hard all night and caught nothing. But I will do as you say. And the Bible is telling us here, Peter using the words we and I, taking God just 
out of it. This is what we have done. This is how we have toiled. And he says, I will do as you say, it, it, as if it's his second option. I'm going to do what I want to do first, but now, okay, now, now my way didn't work, now let me try your way. And that's what Peter says, okay, okay, uh, I worked hard all night, I know what I'm doing, I've been fishing for a long time. But since you say, I'll go ahead and let down the nets. And it's kind of like that when Jesus calls us to be uh, uh, gentle because he's our master. He's the Lord and master. In Acts 2.36, Peter preached that sermon on uh, uh, the day of Pentecost. Peter says, that same Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. God made him that. He's your Lord and he's your Savior. God didn't make you or me Lord in Christ. Lord means master. Christ means savior. Peter says, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. Okay, let's try your way. And if you find yourself sometimes in that situation, well, I've done things my way. Okay, God, let me try your way. And what's unfortunate is we waste so many years doing things our way instead of Yahweh. And when we finally come to it, sometimes it's too late. You know when you hit rock bottom? When you stop digging. Verse number six says, when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. When they had done what? Follow the Lord's word. When they had followed what Jesus said, when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity. Now, in John 21, 6, uh, uh, Peter did not, re, uh, you know, question the Lord about his, um, about his, uh, you know, why the Lord told them to put down. But in, in John 21, he told them to put down uh, their nets. And that the Bible says they just did it. They just did it. They just did what the Lord told them to do. But we see here that Peter is questioning what the Lord is saying. But at his word, this is what's wonderful. But at his word, there was a great catch of fish. And at the Lord's word, you will find out that you will stop gazing at empty nets. That's what Peter did. We, I, I worked hard. That's why Jesus says those who trust in themselves, that which is right to man is detestable in the sight of God. There's no man or woman in here that has a heaven or hell to put any of us in. But God does. That's why in Matthew 10, when Jesus says, do not fear man who can kill the body. Fear God who can put the body and the soul in hell. This here makes Jesus our master. He is the judge that we will see at the last day. It says every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. You can be eight foot two and 900 pounds, but you're going to get down. Every knee will bow before Jesus because he is master. I don't care. It doesn't matter what profession I'm in. Doesn't matter who I think I am. Doesn't matter how much money I got. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get down. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess because Jesus is master. And if you think otherwise, judgment day will be a sad day for many of us. And the Bible says, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat, verse 7, for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. 
That means the Lord is able to give you more than what you can imagine. Ephesians 3.20. Either you can take God's way or you can take sin's way because sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. As the prodigal son, sin took him further than he wanted to go and kept him longer than he wanted to stay. Then the Bible says when he came to himself. That's what God wants, see. When he came to himself, when he recognized that he was wrong. It's hard for a man sometimes to be humble and to say, hey, I'm wrong. Because some men think it's a weakness to admit that I'm wrong. But Peter said, Verse 8, but when Simon Peter saw that he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. And everyone here this morning can echo the words of Peter, I am a sinful man. It is by grace you have been saved. It is the gift of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody in here is without sin. And if man could save himself, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. You can't, I can't save myself. So the Bible says, go away from me. He says, Lord, I am a sinful man. Then the Bible says that this is what God came for. In Hebrews 8, 12, it says, for I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. That's why God sent Jesus. And Peter says, Master, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. But God says, listen, I will be merciful to their iniquities. You can't find that in the world, can you? Huh? I'm going to hold against you what you did 20 years ago. Oh, it's right here on my records. But God forgives you, and he will remember your sins no more. But we live in a society that is unforgiving. You did wrong 20 years ago, I'm still going to hold it against you. You go rent a house. Oh, it says in 1991. Oh, you want this job. Oh, it was in 2000. That was 20 years ago. It is unforgiving, but God says, I will remember their sins no more. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, you, ever had, you, you ever had that with, with yourself? You find it hard to forgive others and you find it hard to forgive yourself. I just can't forgive. I'm just so hard on myself. Jesus is master. Peter said, I fell down and said, Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Peter recognized his sinful condition. And you know what? It'll never change. You'll always be gazing at empty nets till you recognize your sinful condition. And until I change it, you'll always see me gazing at empty nets. Bible says in Romans 4, 7, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Covered by what? When God sees you, he don't see Mike. He sees the blood of Jesus poured over Mike. No flesh shall stand before him and glory. God sees the blood on him. Says, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Look at Romans 5, 21. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Where is it going to reign? It says right there. Through righteousness to eternal life. And eternal life is only through Jesus Christ. You, you, you're not, I can't go to heaven on my own efforts. That's why Jesus says there in Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. And he's talking about those that, well, wait a minute, we, uh, we've helped the poor in your name. We've done this in your name. 
Look at all of these good works. Listen, good works don't make you a good person. And Peter, you have to ask yourself, well, who are you? I'm not talking about what you do. Oh, well, I'm a fireman. Oh, I'm a doctor. No, 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 no. Who are you? Who are you? Peter says, Lord, I'm a sinful man. You know, you can go home and pay your bills, take care of your kids. You can go help the homeless person out there in society. That doesn't make me a good person. I can call 911 on my neighbors because whatever the case may be, saying that I'm taking care of the neighborhood, that doesn't make me a good person. You know, when somebody cuts you off in traffic, whatever you think or whatever you say, that's who you are. Okay. It's not about what you do. It's, it's how you respond to other people. That's who you are. It's how I think. It's what I do. I can pay all my bills uh, uh, until judgment day come. That doesn't make me a good person. It's who I am in character. Peter says, I am a sinful man. He recognized who he was in character. And then the Bible says, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God, listen, in him. It is only in him. And if you can ask yourself the question like Peter did, who are you? I'm not talking about what you do. I'm talking about what you think, how you respond to other people. Do you go and gossip? Oh, oh well, did you, did you get, that's who you are. You get on the phone, somebody does something, and uh, you want to talk bad about them, right? You want to give them a mouthful. That's who you are. See, society says, oh, look at that man helping that woman over there. He must be a good person. That doesn't make me a good person. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, he says, well, look, we, 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 we helped all these people in your name. We, uh, we fed the poor. We, we did this. Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You can do all the great works in the world, but that doesn't make me a good person. Who you are is how you respond to God. Who you are is how you respond to others. And today the Bible says he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, the righteousness of God is only in Christ. It is not in you. That's why Jesus says he said a parable to those who trusted in themselves. Listen, don't trust in yourselves today. And I really want you to ask yourself the question, well, who are you? I'm not talking about what you do. I'm not talking about how you treat your husband, how you treat your wife. Oh, you go to work. I've been going to work for 20 years. It doesn't make you a good person. Because God is judging us on who we are. And whatever you think you've done that you've got away with, it's coming up again. You'll answer for it again. And this morning, we can be as Peter and we can say, Lord, I am a sinful man. And we can turn because the righteousness of God is in Christ. I'm a sinful man. So I fall down and call on the Lord. Now, some of you probably can fall down and call on yourself. But you'll always be gazing at empty nets. This morning... You hear the word of God, are you like Peter? Do you respond to God when he tells you to do something? He said, at your word, do you respond to God? Because how you respond to God is who you are. And this morning, you hear the word of God, do you believe what you've heard? Then repent, confess, and be baptized in the watery grave of baptism, Acts twenty two sixteen, 16, and wash your sins away. That's what we're called to do. And this morning, the invitation is to you. Are you sinful? How are you going to respond to Jesus this morning? In Matthew 22, that's what Pilate said. 
after he'd released Barabbas, and he said to the people, he said, what then will you do with Jesus? That's your question. That's who you are. What then will you do with Jesus? Respond, or you can join with the rest of the crowd that's screaming, crucify him. Crucify him. The message is yours this morning as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. What did wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white. be seated. And at this time, let's be led in our closing prayer. Holy Father, we are so thankful for the example that you have given us through your Son. Uh, I pray that we can have the heart to be faithful as he is uh, to be caring and concerned about the needs of others. But most of all, Father God, that we will accept uh, what he says, that our spiritual condition uh, will be acceptable unto you. Father, um, this week, if we have been struggling with anything, if there's some things that we just cannot seem to get around in our lives, help us to come to ourselves. Help us to call on Jesus as our master because he is gentle and he is humble. And whatever we struggle with, Father, we know that it may be bigger than us, but it is not bigger than you. And we pray that you will strengthen us to call on you uh, in our times of trouble and that we will call Jesus our master and our Lord because you have made him both Lord and Christ. Thank you for the hearts this morning and the ears that were uh, open to your word, Father God, and who were receptive to the things um, <clears throat> by your word. And it is because of your word, Father God, that we are able to get the best things out of life. And when we try to do things on our own, Father God, we end up failing ourselves and we end up failing you. But I pray that we would do things at your word, and that we would turn and that we will change the way we think and act when it comes to you, Father God, and we will allow the word of God to guide us in our lives. Thank you for the wonderful uh, Christians and the souls that are here this morning, 
They are here because they believe that Jesus is Master and Lord. And Father, we are thankful for these people and we pray that they will remain faithful and that they will continue to look to you for guidance. Uh, Father, those who may be experiencing any physical health or spiritual health, uh, I pray that uh, you as the God of all comfort uh, will help them, Father God, and that they will lean on Jesus who is able to take care of any situation we may have in our lives. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being so kind. And thank you for creating mankind and putting us into your presence and giving us the opportunity to live and go to heaven or to live and have eternal damnation. But I pray that this morning uh, we choose your son, Jesus. This is our prayer in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.